Thank you for joining us here on PM Express. Uh, you may have seen a significant press conference organized by the National Democratic Congress, the Council of Elders, the National Executive Committee, of course, led by the chairman himself, addressed it. And the party is clear that they will do everything in their power, legally possible, uh, to ensure that the Electoral Commission's uh, legislation before Parliament that will en ensure that the registration of voters is carried out going forward with multiple identity documents and not only the Ghana card as has now been proposed and placed in this legal document which is before uh, going to the Parliament for its consideration. Remember the Parliament resumes in October. They have an equal number of members of Parliament there and they're going to deploy all that and more, including the courts, to fight this because they take this very seriously. In fact, in the midst of all that today, they alleged that it is part of a grand plan uh, by the uh, Electoral Commission and the incumbent New Patriotic Party to rig the 2024 elections. I mean, they have objected to this before, but this is the first time it's been linked to an agenda to rig the elections. So we're going to take some time to look at really what is happening with this um, CI, that is the, the Electoral Commission is going to place before uh, Parliament for consideration, which will restrict the identity document you require to get onto the voters register to the Ghana card. And let's put this right. This is not a registration. This is not a fresh voter registration. This is for continuous voting, uh, continuous registration, I mean. So if you've turned 18 since the last elections, or for some reason you've never registered to vote before, or you don't have a voter ID card, then this new approach by the Electoral Commission will favor you. So for the very first time, we've talked about continuous registration for so long, you don't need to have this one-time registration with all the tensions anymore, but this time, anytime you turn 18, just walk into any of the EC offices show your Ghana card and register. This is what the uh, Electoral Commission plans to do. But the concern is, why do you limit the identity document to the, the, to the, to the Ghana card, which you do not have any control over? The Electoral Commission has said, well, there are real good reasons for this. And they recently put out a statement and then they address a press conference who explain this. We'll, we'll get to that. And then there's also the question of what the NIA's boss said recently, Professor Kenatifa, in reference, I must say, in the context of that was the deadline for SIM registration. He says, well, they have two million people, we believe, still who don't have the Ghana card, but it is simply impossible to register all of them and issue them with cards before the deadline. Right? But the NDC referenced that to the NC, but that clearly shows that the NIA has challenges. But is the context appropriate? If you extend this to 2024, that is a, almost a two-year window, does that give the NIA enough time now to register all of them? The Electoral Commission does some analysis and say that's true. Okay, we'll come to all that. This is a pretty complex matter. But as you know, because it has to do with your right to vote, it is a very important issue. And so we'll, let's discuss it a bit more with the people who have been to IPARC and understand this. But our own research, what does it say? We'll get into that. Before we, I introduce my, my guest uh, to you tonight, I want to quickly get you, if you missed it during the day, this is what happened at the NDC's headquarters today when the party's Council of Elders, supported by the chairman and other executives of the party, addressed a news conference. Watch. Important matters that threaten the sustenance of our democracy and our very peace as a nation. Ladies and gentlemen, we invited you here today to draw the attention of Ghanaians to how the Electoral Commission is seeking to undermine our democracy through the proposed public election registration of voters instruments. This regulation is a clear, is clear on the face of it that the Ghana card shall be the only proof of identification for purposes of voter registration. 
The regulation flies in the face of Article 42 of the Constitution, which states as follows. Every citizen of Ghana, 18 years or above, and of sign mind, has the right to vote and is entitled to be registered as a voter for the purpose of public elections and referenda, end of quote. This clearly makes the proposed provisions unconstitutional. What it means is that if the CI is passed in its current form, it will not only be unconstitutional, it will radically disenfranchise all those prospective voters who for no fault of this are unable to obtain the national ID card issued by the National Identification Authority. They would have been denied the right provided for them under Article 42 of the 1992 Constitution. At present, statistics available suggest that at least about 2 million Ghanaians are yet to be issued the Ghana card. The registration process for the Ghana card has been characterized by several difficulties. The National Identification Authority has missed several deadlines to complete the registration of citizens. <laughs> Professor Kenatifa, Executive Director of the National Identification Authority, stated at a press conference last Friday, 16 September 2022, and I quote, we have the mandate to register all Ghanaians in Ghana, and all Ghanaians abroad. There is no way NIA can register all Ghanaians in Ghana. If you look at our performance record, as stern as we believe our performance is, the reality is that there are approximately 2 million people, aged 15 years and above, who have not registered for the Ghana card. There is no way the National Identification Authority can register these, those people, those people. It is physically, technically, and fiscally impossible, end of quote. We therefore found it strange that the Electoral Commission will call a press conference and urge the National Identification Authority to expedite action on registration. It obviously doesn't lie in the mouth of the EC to do so. In the circumstances, therefore, making the Ghana card the sole requirement for voter registration will serve to deny millions of Ghanaians their right to register and vote. Since the CI has not been formally laid before Parliament, we take this opportunity to call upon the EC to abandon the idea altogether. We wish to serve notice that we will use every lawful means to resist this latest effort to undermine the right of Ghanaians to vote and in the process skew the electoral system in favor of the MPP. We will mobilize the broad masses of Ghanaians to wage a sustained and unrelenting campaign to prevent any attempt by the EC to strip large sections of the population of their right to vote. We demand an immediate cessation of all work on the lay of the CI in Parliament, pending thorough deliberation and consultation with all relevant stakeholders to fine-tune it to take on board the concerns expressed by us and others that may, that others may, be, may, help, may hold as stakeholders. Given the above circumstances, we have the considered view that CI-91, as amended, is adequately it's adequate for voter registration and subsequent conduct of 2024 elections. elections. And that there is no justification on the part of the EC to bring this new CI as it proposed to do. Since the coming into office of the Akufuado Bamiya government, however, things have taken a dark turn, and the time tested use of consensus building and dialogue as tools for the management of Ghana electoral process has been supplanted 
by overt partisanship and impunity by the current leadership of the Electoral Commission. Since the po politically motivated and unconstitutional removal of the previous leadership of the Electoral Commission by President Akufuado and the convenient installation of MPP surrogates, Jean Mensah and Bosman Nasari at the helm of the Commission, consensus and dialogue have been, have been in very short supply. Disrespect and hostility by Jim Mensah and her charges at the EC towards the NDC and other parties deemed to be opposed to the current government have become the order of the day. Jim Mensah and Bosman Sari have not hidden their intent and penchant for unreasonable and unjustifiable policies and measures aimed at furthering the interests of the MPP and the appointing authority often to the disadvantage of the large sections of Guardians, especially those they believe are likely to vote against the MPP in elections. The alarm bells were set ringing when out of the blue and without any sound justification, the Electoral Commission decided to compile a needless new voters register only because President Kufuado and the MPP wanted it, having advertised their intentions long before they took power. The aim of that was to shore up the numbers of voters in MPP stronghold and suppress numbers in perceived NDC stronghold. So that is the national chairman of the NDC. Uh, so we have the National Council of Elders of the party seated behind him whilst he make this delivery. So they're elevating this and you heard him, they're gonna mobilize they're using all lawful means. They're going to mobilize the masses to resist this, of course. Um, it's something that we need to pay attention to, and we'll do so. Um, when I return from the break, um, we'll speak to the MPP's Director of Elections, Evans Nemako, who's joining me right now to, to look into this. We'll also be joined by the NDC's team, also working on this, on this very matter. Uh, will, will also join me as we look into this. And then we'll look at what the evidence suggests. We'll look at it from the legal point of view, what we know, what the NIA's uh, position is on this, and then what the Electoral Commission's own position is. So they see w w w which of these two parties' positions on this matter does it tally with, and, and where should the real facts be? Stay with me after this. We're going to interrogate the real matters. And thanks for staying with us here on PM Express. Uh, let me bring in my guest now. Uh, Evans Nemako is a Director of Elections and International Relations for the New Patriotic Party. And we also have uh, the Director of Legal for the Opposition National Democratic Congress, uh, Abraham Amaliba, also joining us right now. Um, I, we just had the uh, the the NDC press conference in detail, uh, as addressed by the chairman himself, flanked by the Council of Elders. Um, Mr. Nemako, you had that even before I bring in the uh, your colleague from the NDC. You you had that. Their position is a very simple one, and it bothers on two factors. One is that if you use the Ghana card as a sole identity document for the voter register that would disenfranchise people. And the second reason they put for that is because the Ghana card itself is a card issued by another agency, independent of the Electoral Commission, who had just said that to register all the people within the time frame, realistically and contextually, they were talking about the SIM card registration, but they've had challenges registering Ghanaians in the past. And so if you anchor it on that, you're running the real risk of different disenfranchising people. You don't think that is a sound argument at least to consider at this point? It was good evening and thank you for having me. And let me greet your listeners, the viewers across the globe. Uh, to start with, I, I will begin by saying that uh, the good old uh, Reverend uh, of Osuampofu 
has misfired. It appears to me that he really has difficulty appreciating the new CI that is about to come. The NDC really wants unnecessary attention. They don't have it. The issue he raised do not have foundation. And we just have to look at the record, Evans. The new CI that is to come from discussions we've had at the IPAC level is supposed to ensure the operationalization of the continuous registration in our books. We've had before the 2020 elections, EC conducting mass registration exercise. That got as many as 70 million, 29,986 people being registered. Of that number, as many as 60.09% use the Ghana card. About 6.4 million people use the guarantor system, and a little of 1.92 use the passport to register. And, and so, even before the CI 91 being amended to CI 126, the NDC went to court. They challenged it, and they lost. And if you check the history of the NDC, anytime the EC will want to introduce a new form that will enhance the voting management system, they disagree. But we heard in 2014, the ruling in Abu Ramadan Evans Himako versus the Electoral Commission and how the court directed the EC. And so for NDC to have their national chairman supported by some of the elders to come out for the world to hear of them and give us an appreciation of something they lack knowledge of is serious. Even as I can tell you, and I've told you the history as of the last registration exercise. And even for all those 17 million people on the electoral roll, they are not going to register again. They are already on the electoral roll. It's just that only those who will turn out 18 or those who could not register for whatever reason are those that the new CI will mandate them to show as proof of their citizenship the national ID card. Hey, with that, yes. let, let, that what you said is fact. What you said is factual, right? However, yeah. however, let me that, that person, yeah, just a second, just a second, I'm, just, this, is, this is important. That person who just turned 18, or that person who for some reason in 2020 did not register, the new position of the CI, if it's passed by parliament, if it goes through, will mean that the only document we're required to show will be the Ghana card. What if that person, for some reason, no fault of his, because the NIA for some reason cannot issue the cards, it's unable to hold the card. That person will be disenfranchised. Even if it's one person, you're saying that is okay? Mr. Nemako, can you hear me? Hello, Mr. Nemako. Okay, I may have lost him there. Uh, do, do we still have Mr. Nemako on? Well, Evan, yes. we are just doing conjecturing. We are just conjecturing. It... Yes, Mr. Nemako. Okay, well, he, he, he calls this uh, conjecture. I mean, Mr. Nemako, do we still have you? Okay, it's, uh, it, it's a network. Hello. Let me bring in Mr. Maliba as we, as we begin to hear. I, I want to hear his reason why he believes that is, that is conjecture, because we've seen they let the NIA themselves have said, well, we've had challenges. In fact, recently when I did a similar show here, 
the NIA was clear that one of the key challenges they have is they need more resources from the government. They need to employ more people, et cetera, et cetera. You have um, just over two years to go for the next elections. Can the NIA reasonably register two million people? Um, and those who are turning 18 going forward, almost a million people uh, for the elections then, is a question that nobody can answer now. You can have faith, but do you want to work with faith uh, when it comes to subject of people's rights to vote? I'll get him to answer that question. But let me bring in Mr. Amaliba. Mr. Amaliba, you with me, correct? Hello, Mr. Yes, Amaliba. Yes, I can hear you okay. loudly. Yes. I can hear you. I, I want to start, I want to start with you on, on the question of law. And I want to take you to a law that the NDC passed in 2012, which really is the initial fundamental basis for the EC's action. And that law, which was passed, is called the National Identity Register Regulation. And this is the Legislative Instrument 2111. In that regulation, if you go to Section 71J, I want to read that because it's, it's important to appreciate that. 71 says, and it comes under the title, Mandatory Use of National Identity Card. 71 says, a national identity card issued to an individual shall be used for the following transactions where identification is required. J says, registration of voters. So this is a law that you passed, your government passed in 2012 in which you specifically stated that the Ghana card once issued shall be used for the following transactions where identification is required. And the operative word is shall, included in that list of things that will be used for, is registration of voters, which is what the Electoral Commission is doing. So what's the problem here? Rivers, the key word there is issued. All what you have read, comes to, to nothing unless it has been issued. It is an issue once that we are complaining about. We are saying that as we speak, our SIM card registration process has hit a snack because Kenneth Tefua has indicated that he cannot issue Ghana cards to such an extent that everybody will have it, so as to be able to register a SIM card. Now let's come to the voters register or registration. But when Atifa said that, do you if, appreciate? When Atifa, forgive me, very important. When Atifa said that, you appreciate the context he was speaking in is in reference to the September 30th deadline for SIM registration, not the next two years. It doesn't matter. It, it what does is matter. Clear is that Tifo has complained. No, no. Tifo has complained that he lacks resources, and that because of the lack of resources, it is on. It is uh, the NIA is unable to print and issue our cards. Two million. You are aware. by no, by yeah, September thirtieth. Yeah, no, let me let me flow. You are aware. You are aware that some people have registered to have their Ghana card since 2019. They've not laid hands on it. Indeed, some have to travel from their areas of abode, from the north to the headquarters. Still, they've not had access to their cards. And you are saying what? You are saying that those people who are Ghanaians, they are 18 and above, and they have sound mind, should be disqualified by CI, and you have a director of elections of the opposition party who doesn't see anything wrong with that, we can only use the Ghana card if we get to a point where immediately you go into the uh, registration centers and your picture is taken instantly, you will issue your Ghana card. Then we say that we've arrived. Indeed, we have information that the NIA in our strongholds, 
is slowing down the processes and making it difficult for our people in our strongholds to acquire the Ghana cards. And that's where the chairman of the party indicated that there's some collusion just to ensure that the NDC and its members do not get the Ghana card so as to register. And we are saying that in all serious democracies, what they do when it comes to registration is to look for a document which is common, a document of identification which is common to the citizens. Here we are in this country. The basic document, which is the Ghana card, is not easily accessible. Yeah, but 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 so and so when you were passing the law in 2012, uh, you, 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 you didn't. Of, when you passed the law in 2012, you didn't know this point. Of, uh, elections. Who didn't know that? I mean, in 2012, when you're passing the law to if, say if it, it is I'm a document. Saying that, if I'm saying that, I'm saying that the 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 institution that is responsible for issuing the cards is saying that they have been staffed of resources. Was it deliberate to staff them of resources? And that they cannot roll out these cars in, in, in ways that will make it easy for all Ghanaians to have. You asked a very relevant question. There is no way that even if a single Ghanaian qualified 18 eh, is of sound mind and, and is desirous to be on the register, there's no reason why his inability to have access to the car through no fault of his should be denied the right to vote. That's the point. That's the point fundamental point of all this argument. And you have a, a director of elections of a politician not seeing anything wrong with this. And I think that... What was it, you bad? Ever. Yeah, I mean, okay, uh, 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 Mr. Nemako, I'll have you back. You, you made the point earlier, Mr. Nemako, that the point about disenfranchising people is conjecture. I'm curious why you say that. Yes, but before I get to the point, I was saying it's a mere conjecture. Mr. Maliba, I'm not the director of research and elections for an opposition party. I'm not. You see, you, you, your client had been the equation of asking not. Oh, go ahead and let him. Will you let him stop this? No, we are on a particular issue. Go on to that. What do you mean by that? Yeah, I mean, but but the Mr. man, the Mr. man. What, what Mr. Nemako, he has a, he has a point, though, because there's a substantive matter. He has, he has a point. I, I thought you were making a, a comment in jest and passing. I mean, a friendly banter. No, no, but, 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 but let me... Uh, if us, the if he's not no, wait, wait, wait. I mean, he's not... What, he, what, 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 what is this? No, no, wait, 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 Amaliba, give me a second. He, he Mr. Nemako, Mr. We Nemako, I know you were making that point. I, I was hoping you were making that point in jest and passing. Can you, can you, can you address... Can you address the point substantive matter? The point I'm no, making I don't have is that we've had challenges with people using an orthodox means to get into our electoral role. And I'm saying that if you look at Abu Ramadan events in Macron versus the Electoral Committee, you realize that at that point, some people had gotten the health insurance ID card and they could use that to register. We saw it as a problem, the court ruled against it. I'm saying before the CI-126 came, the NDC went to court and they lost. And so it's not only a CI that is going to save the NDC from losing again the 2024 election. You lose again, Mr. Maliba. You can continue to insult me. It's your own cup of tea. The point is that We've had discussions. If you look at the CI-91, the proof of citizenship vibe, it was changed because in every registration we've had as a country, we've seen minors getting onto the electoral roll. We've seen non ghanaians getting onto the electoral roll. The issue of guarantor system had always been challenged by parties. And so going forward, if there's the need to adopt a system that is foolproof, why not? But for Professor Tefa to say that he's unable to register every Ghanaian, he's right. Because if you take the national 
identity, identity register act it's not every Ghanaian who is supposed to be registered. You have those six years and above. And if <laughs> Mr. Amaba wouldn't want to know, it's his own cup of tea. So the point is that it's not everybody who will be registered. And I'm saying for the 70 million people who have been registered since 2020, their names in the electoral rule will not change. Except those who would have turned 18 or those who couldn't. And so this is a simple issue. The EC is supposed to do continuous registration. So even as, mm -hmm. as part of discussion at the IPAC level, a committee to ensure the modalities for registration has been set up. Because the NDC has elected themselves not to participate at the IPAC level, they wouldn't appreciate this. So if I'm telling you that you could have somebody who get onto the electoral roll, and go into an election and, 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 and become a member of parliament, and you have a call to say you are not right to be there, and you have been his counsel, you are then sit sitting in your home insulting me. It's up to you. But I'm sitting for in us your as home. New Patriotic Party, for us as New Patriotic Party, it's the best way to go. The NDC will want to skew the discussion that the New Patriotic Party have put in place a, a EC that is pro us and want to rig election. I mean, it's, 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 it's not founded. For us, yeah. when Dr. Kwejoa Frejan was the EC, we won elections. When Mami Shalotto say was the EC, we won elections. We will continue to win elections because we are working towards promoting the interest of majority of Ghanaians, and they say it. Mm. So but, it's not a CI. Yeah, Mr. Nemako, let, let's, let's break down the numbers. So Mr. Malibu, I'll bring you back in short. Let's bring the numbers. Recently, the, as, as last month, the Electoral Commission issued a statement and did a press conference, and they broke down the numbers they are expecting um, to register annually if the continuous registration goes on. This is what they said, that they expect that between 450,000 and 550,000 Ghanaians every year um, will be registering once they do the continuous registration, right? And they go on to say that we believe that about the 17 million people that the NI has registered, it is likely that 450,000, 550,000 people will register annually half the Ghana card, okay? And then they make the point, and this is the part I, I, that has interests me, quote, those who do not have the Ghana card should begin the process of acquiring the card to enable them register as voters. Now, I submit to you, Ms. Enemako, that the problem is not registering, but the challenge has been issuing once you register, which is not in the, in, in the power of the individual who has registered, but solely in the domain of the NIA. And they've had challenges issuing cards over the years. That will disenfranchise possibly up to 550,000 people if this goes on. You, you're not worried about that. Okay, so now you want to discuss the operations of the NIA. Which is fundamental okay. to this matter. Yes, yeah, so, so let's interrogate these issues you've raised. But for Electoral Commission, with their projection of registering as many as uh, 450,000 yes. people, 500,000 within a year, and therefore yes. in the two, three years, this is the number they seek to register. Yes, we will interrogate them at IPAC. But I'm saying that when the EC decided to adopt a new voter management system towards the 2020 election, we had the same professor. No, but, but you, you are not, sorry, for, for, forgive me, Mr. Nima, you are not answering my no, specific... No. You're not answering no, my specific no, question. No, no. no sorry, sorry, sorry. The point. Ms. No, I, I'll ask you a very specific question about the EC's own projections, and then they go to say, mm -hmm. encourage people to go and register. But that's not the issue. Registration of the issue. It's issuing. I'm saying that based on what we know so far, and the challenge with issuing cards, possibly 550,000 up to who have challenge in actually registering and getting to vote. You're not concerned about that. Well, Iman, I'll, I'll support an arrangement that will ensure that our electoral rule is not porous for anybody to get in. 
And so if you make a law that says that to be able to get onto the electoral roll, you need, as a matter of agency, the NIA card to be registered, I'll support it. True. But you see, for NDC, yeah. if we leave NDC, they will say you, hospital cards should be used as means of identification. For NDC, they wouldn't mind at all. That's why they supported the NHIA card as means of registration. And so I'm not surprised. All I'm saying is that we need to have a watertight program that will ensure the sanctity and sanity of our electoral system. Yeah, no, but no, nobody, nobody see... disputes nobody disputes that, Mr. Demarco. But I, I, I return to the real reason why we are having this conversation, the likelihood that people will be disenfranchised. And I want to put to you the data from the NIA. NIA so far has only issued, well, not only, significant 15.8 million cards. But they've registered 17.1 million people. That means you have a gap there of more than a million people who have registered, but for years haven't received their cards. My submission to you is, if the EC says up to 550,000 people, they expect to register annually, these people will indeed go and register because they want to vote. And by no fault of theirs, could count as part of those people who have registered but haven't been issued cards. How do you justify that when the people can register to vote in 2024? Well, what you are not able to tell us is that of the number that have not been able to have their cards, how many of them are already on the EEC's electoral roll? You are not able to tell us this. And so that's why I said that. We are mere conjecturing this issue, and the NDC have thrown in this, and it has no basis. But in the least, in, in the least, in, in the least, you see that there's a possibility that people could be disenfranchised if this is not handled with the care and sensitivity it requires, because it revolves on elections. Evans, if the EC comes out with the CI that says that we will use Garanta system only as a means of getting onto the electoral roll, there will still be some people who will not be able to register. Because you can't force anybody. You can't. Issue of getting onto the electoral roll, there must be an effort from you, the individual, if you see it as an exercise, your constitutional right to exercise it. And I'm saying that, yes, some people have gotten their, their, their NIA card, others may not have, and we must ensure that the NIA is giving the necessary support to as much as possible, all those within the law who are supposed to be registered to be covered. I mean, Mr. Maliba, I think that. Mm, sorry, uh, Mr. I Menaco, think that Mr. Menaco, stay with me. I'll come NBC back to you. NBC mm -hmm. must get it straight. The allegations they keep on throwing into the air will not help them anyway. We did not put Mame, Jemensa, Bosman, Tete as commissioners to rig elections for the new patriotic party. So I'm saying that in election 2024, they will lose again. Yeah. Why is NBC so strong in their position, so entrenched, that we should not have a system that is able to check out people who are not supposed to be on the electoral roll? Do they fancy post-registration exercise where there are challenges? As political parties, we sit in committees at the EC where people who are not supposed to be on the register are vetted and taken out. Is that what they want us to go through? Let, 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 me, let me bring in Mr. Ma Mr. Maliba. Do, do you acknowledge that you already have a settled voter register with 17 million plus voters, which was used for the 2020 elections, which delivered you, in fact, a hung parliament? Equal strength. In fact, NDC still believes that, you know, they actually won more seats in Parliament. But a significant number of seats you won there, and significant number of votes, you closed the gap quite significantly in the presidential race as well. That voter register is intact, and this is simply for continuous registration of voters, of people who turn 18, and those who didn't register the last time. Do you acknowledge that is what it is, and this is not a fatal matter? Evans, this is a given. No, nobody is saying that we are going to re-register every Ghanaian. So this is a given. 
It's a non-starter. That's not where we are arguing from. And I've heard Nima Kut speak about that on two occasions. That, that is not, and that's not the, the starting point for this argument. We know that. It's a given. What we are saying is that the people who are going to register will need a Ghana card. And you asked him about the fact that the EC is dependent on the Ghana card. And he was in the sixes and sevens. Indeed, in that press statement by the EC, the EC was now calling, if you read it, the EC was now calling the NIA to speed up the process of issuing the cards. If I'm lying, say I'm lying. What does this tell me and you? It tells us that the EC itself acknowledges the challenges of the National Identification Authority. So, our issue is simply this. Because Okay, um, we have a challenge with, it, with this. Um, hello, Mr. Maliba. I think he may have a, 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 a call in, but he was making a certain point. Yes, Mr. Maliba? Yes, I can hear you now. Yes, you're making a point. Yes, yes. So because the EC itself has, has acknowledged the challenges that the NIA is facing, it is important that... We all come to terms with the fact that that process would disenfranchise some Ghanaians. And how does this turn out to be that we will lose the next elections? The constitution is very clear. You must be a Ghanaian 18 and you must be of some mind. Are those people who are unable to acquire the card, do they qualify per Article 42? They qualify, but they are now being elbowed out because of the Ghana card. Let me touch on what he talked about concerning names of uh, minors, names of uh, persons who are not qualified to go onto the register. Why, Evans? CI 126 provides for how you clean that register. Apart from that, CI 126 has got sanctions for those who flout the the, 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 the regulations. Why is the EC not activating all those processes to punish people who have decided to breach the rules and have their names on the register? Why is the EC rather interested in disqualifying Ghanaians who are eligible to be on the register? And so nobody is saying that the registration process is going to start afresh. And that's why I told you, it's a given, we know that. But even with the continuous registration, we are of the view that using the Ghana card alone, which by the way, can be acquired through guaranteeing, if I have you averted your mind to that, that the Ghana card can be acquired through guaranteeing. When then you come to register for your name to be on the uh, easy register, the guarantee system is removed. Whom are we deceiving? Whom are we, uh, we go uh, to uh, court. if we want, uh, the, that we want a, a proper register? When the document you are relying on can be acquired through Hello. guarantee. Mm. I mean, so, 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 so for you, um, because there's a guarantee process at the stage of acquiring the Ghana card, it, it then follows that you should also introduce that second leg in, in the acquiring of the voters, voters' ID? Is that, that your suggestion? But, uh, but Evans, you know that the EC patted itself on the back by saying that it provided or produced or delivered one of the best elections. GMS has been saying that. Mm. What register did they use to get that result? It the was a register which yes. allow people to be guaranteed. It was a register which allow people to use their passport. It was a register which allow people to use their Ghana card. Yeah, but what so, has suddenly changed? Yeah, I mean, but so, so so what? They shouldn't. They, the so so they, they shouldn't. They shouldn't yeah. improve. They shouldn't improve on no matter how seamless and fantastic it was. You, they shouldn't improve on that. Yes. If it's not broken, you don't fix it. What is broken? So, so, do you so, change your winning team? 
not a man I mean, fan like me. But, but Mr. Maliba, I mean, in, 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 when, when, when Mr. Maliba, I'm, I'm, interest, I'm, interest, I'm interested in this irony. When the EC was compiling the 2020 voters register, you, you fought this. You said there's no need for register. That register, you say, well, now that register is so good, you know, keep it. We don't, we, we, that is flip-flopping on the subject. Evans, how long shall we sit down for the EC to be changing the electoral processes every time we are going for elections? How long shall we sit down? Don't we have to get to a point where there's certainty no, but but every because year, it's not but, but, broken. I'm only about every no, after every election. I'm only about our, our history, our history, our false Republican history is replete with amendments to the CIs and reforms after every elections. This is just one of them. And, and by the way, history says each time there's been an attempt to reform, parties depending on where they are, either in opposition or in government. I would either fought it or supported it. So this is really not new, is it not? It's what we've done for the last 30 years plus. And this is just one of those to improve the electoral process, is it not? This is a retrogression against the Constitution. I have dealt with that. So I thought you are following me, and that's why I'm, I'm running and you are still I'm, No, I'm, I'm talking about, this, I'm, I'm referring this, to our history. This, no, I'm also saying that this cannot be an improvement. This is a retro, uh, retrogression where you are having to use a card that would disenfranchise some Ghanaians. That cannot be a progression. That's mm. my point. Okay. And, and so right. if you are introducing new, if you are introducing new things, those new things must ensure that Ghanaians are not disenfranchised. Those new things must not aim at targeting a section or a group of people and disenfranchising them when it's not a, no fault of theirs. That's the point. Okay. Very finally, before I bring in um, um, uh, the events, the Michael, there was an allegation that was made today at this press conference that because of all the concerns you have with the Ghana card as a sole identity document, it possibly might be part of a grand scheme to rig the elections. Do you agree as a lawyer that that conclusion is not supported by any fact or evidence? Hello, Mr. Maliba. Yes, I can hear you. I mean, I'm just saying, do, do you agree? Do you agree that the conclusion that your national chairman expressed today, that because of all these concerns, then the Electoral Commission um, is in collusion with the MPP to rig the elections to favor them, it's that conclusion is not supported by any facts or evidence? Oh, yes. I just indicated to you in my earlier submission that in some of our strongholds, the process of issuing and uh, having people register for the Ghana card is very slow. Yeah. Indeed, I have a situation, somebody informed me that in even the strongholds of the MPP, once you have a northern name or you have an ever name, they deny you registration and tell you to go back to your... Well, what your you country. just said is an allegation. And I have people from Massey. What you just no, said is... No, no, I have people... I yeah, but, no, but it's, it's, not, it's not an... It, I mean, I, I'm happy that you're a lawyer. What you, what you just said is an somebody allegation. Somebody told me... I, yeah. It's look, an allegation. Somebody in Kumasi... Somebody in Kumasi could not register, had to go to Bong, Bongo, Erwe Bawes, uh constituency. And registered and came back. Okay, so we so, have those information. So, so, be, so, so because of that, so if it certainly want, must be a rigging agenda. That is it. Okay, they are in collusion. Okay, why is it that the EC would always want to tinker with the register and before we go for elections? Why? Okay, let's stay with me. The let register me, should let, not let, be. Let me, let me bring in advance. Let me get Rivan the final word on this. But Mr. Demarco, so that is the ultimate allegation that was made today against you. Um, is that the case? I mean, obviously, this you are happy with it. The suggestion is that it, it, you are happy with it because you know something that we all don't know. So, sorry, Mr. Demarco, please unmute for me. Hello? Yes, I can hear you. Yeah. Uh... 
I'm happy you 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 told them that he is a lawyer. I'm happy you told them. I'm happy you told them because they had made this allegation that we put in the EC to rig election. That's why I said that for us, the battle is the loss. The party is working. You're organizing ourselves, reorganizing, and we win election 2024 by the grace of God. I mean, I, I don't want to go into these uh, discussion where we are enhancing a system and the NDC is always against it. I'm saying that in Abu Ramadan 1, 2, and 3, the NDC was against it. It was a means this is of repetitive, putting repetitive. sanity into uh, our electoral uh, system. To say. They, dis they disagree. Even when you go to the point where the passing of the CI 1, 2, says, NDC disagree, they went to court and they failed. It's EC, EC who says that going into election 2024, I'm supposed to do continuous registration. But in a manner that the system will be enhanced, I will want to use the NIA card, which has a lot of coverage, so people will prove their guardianship by using the NIA. Even we left a system, one person who got to parliament, Jechi Kwesin, was able to tell Yisi that he had what it takes to get onto the electoral rule. And today, until the court said he can't be a member of parliament, he was sitting in parliament. And I'm saying that do we have to have a porous system or we need to have a watertight system that is able to checkmate all those, in, in, those people who are not eligible to get onto the electoral role? Was the MP's issue about okay. registration? Uh, okay, gen okay, gentlemen. Okay, gentlemen. The, 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 um, the we need to end it. But, but Mr. Mr. Nemako, when is the next IPAC? About we've registration. Not, we've, not been, we've not been extended what, any, 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 invi any invitation. Yet, you so were his lawyer. You let him okay. down. Okay. Okay, gentlemen. Okay, gentlemen. Thank you very much. I mean, definitely, this is a conversation that we will have to return to. Um, the electoral commission has, has set their, 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 their piece on this. The M M NDC definitely is uh, increasing the pressure on this, and you've had them today at this press conference. We'll see. Parliament will have the final say on this though when they return. And so I guess when they return, we'll get some further clarity from the leadership of the House. Enjoy the rest of your evening.